true, the internet is groaning under the weight of pirate shirt tutorials already, but this is a talk about what's involved when you teach someone how to make a linen shirt based on rectangle pattern in the 18th century style when they're a novice sewer. This summer my teenage son told me he wanted to learn to sew and the project most interested him for this maiden voyage was to make an 18th century men's shirt. So we made one together, but what I thought might be useful to other people was to hear some of the things that I was telling him as someone with a certain amount of experience in sewing to someone who was trying these things for the first time. Because the whole point of this process was to teach him to sew, we used a sewing machine wherever it was appropriate, so he would learn a range of techniques. Now, before now, the only time he's ever used a sewing machine was making these bow cases over here, uh, so long straight lines. And so this was the first time that he was measuring, cutting, uh, understanding how a pattern works and hand finishing. As we go, I will describe what I was demonstrating for him and instructing him to do, but in the end, what he was able to do himself. There has been a fair bit of online discourse about whether this really is a good novice project, and I would say that it really is. There are three main reasons. First, obviously, because of the simplicity of the pattern, all rectangles. Uh, the second thing is fitting a gathered sleeve is so much easier, easier than doing a properly fitted sleeve when the sleeve is based on a rectangle with little inserted gussets under here and there are gathers along here you uh, have so much more literal wiggle room than when you're trying to fit a straight curved line against, against a straight curved line and have it all come to exactly the right point down here so yeah these sleeves are a blessing. The other thing that makes it a really good starter project is the ability to tweak as you go. You can honestly say, oh look, we cut that a bit wide, let's put some more gather in here. Oh look, we've cut that a little bit deep, let's, um, let's shorten it here. And there are just so many points at which you can try it on and go, oh yeah, bit this way, bit that way. You'll particularly note the, the dropped sleeve, the fact that the sleeve is not sitting directly on the shoulder, gives you a space to work with there. And the fact that uh, you're gathering the neck under the collar and, um, and putting in these little shoulder gussets uh, gives you space to decide partway through exactly how much you want, how much space you want to give this. Here is the wonderfully economical pattern we came up with. We found that when we had 140 centimeters in width and 160 centimeters in length, we could divide the whole thing up so as to leave, in effect, no waste at all. Now, technically, this corner here was waste, but I'm going to show you in a separate video how we can turn that bit into a stock and therefore use every last scrap. Our take on this shirt was a mashup of a few different people's, very useful, talented people. We started with Bernadette Banners, but then I found Aura Lynn's version an incredibly helpful adaptation to using a machine. And with the neck gussets, I found the step-by-step -step from Pins and Weevils was just terrific for its clarity and detail. Uh, when it came to the teeny-weeny tatting loop, I used Bryce Adams for that. And I'm so grateful to Nicole Rudolph for her walkthrough of buttonholes, which I'm not going to show you closely because ours were a bit rubbish. Our version is just a little bit narrower in the body than Bernadette's version. The sleeves are still nice and wide and full, and you'll see that I've put them on either side here 
rather than bumping up against each other. The reason for that is that this is the width, so these are my selvedges, and I wanted the sleeves to be exactly the same. This gives me a strip in the middle where I can cut the gussets. The uh, arm gussets are larger squares. Bernadette's version didn't have neck gussets, but we watched a few videos that persuaded us that they were a good idea. So there they are sitting slightly smaller and giving us just enough extra leftover fabric around there to make as many little reinforcement squares as we want. But to start at the beginning we must, and this is where we began with 1.6 metres of lovely creamy linen. Washed, dried and ironed before we begin to make sure it's all ready to be used. This one has, it's really got a beautiful kind of blush on it. Not quite white, not quite plain cream either. Very conveniently, we have discovered that the length of the shirt we need is exactly half the width of the fabric. So we have folded it crisply in half and that means we only have to make one cut to get the main full body section of the shirt done. It's a reasonably dense weave, but the threads themselves seem chunky enough, so I think we're going to be okay drawing threads to get our pieces marked out. I draw threads all the time when I'm sewing just to check my edges are straight, uh, but I realise now that I'm always using cotton normally. I did not expect linen to be much more breaky. Uh, so it worked in the end, nice straight lines, but oh, the time it took with all the threads breaking. Back of the scissors, remember, open them all the way up, get all the way in, that's it. If you do happen to have an extra pair of hands available to help you, then holding the fabric taut can really help make it easier to get that crisp line. We've completed the cutting out. So this is the main body piece uh, that will have the, uh, the neck cut in here that we haven't done yet. And then two nice wide sleeves ready for lots of poofy gathering, two collar pieces, two cuff pieces and two underarm gusset squares. We've managed to cut the body piece on a fold so we only needed to cut one piece but we will have to cut the neck hole in here. In order to cut the slit for the head, the obvious first step is to fold the body of the piece and find the middle point because for most people, you will be wanting your head to be in the middle. So we're going to fold it in half, mark the center point with a pin, and then we're going to measure 12 centimetres on either side of that and cut it into a slit. That 24 centimetre width on the head slit is just provisional till we try it on. To cut the part of the neck slit that goes down the middle front of the shirt, we are drawing a thread so we can follow the grain of the fabric and not end up going wonky. So we're just drawing a single thread from the cut we've made for the head at the top in between the shoulder pieces all the way down 20 centimeters to where we want the neck opening to end. <laughs> Anything involving cutting is of course extremely anxiety inducing. I forgot to film it but the first piece of sewing we did was machine stitching the collar and cuffs because that's least intimidating. Don't forget to snip off the fabric at the corner of your collar pieces there so when you turn it around the other way it doesn't end up being more bulky than it needs to be. You want a nice crisp finish there. That's what's going to make your corner sit flat and look pointy when you turn it right side around thusly.
We've just taken a little ironing break to turn around to the right side and press the cuff pieces, the collar, and press in some hemming on the two little neck gussets. We sewed up the sleeves in one piece in their entirety before we did anything to the body of the shirt. If you'd like a step-by-step -step for how to go about that, you can jump over to my earlier chemise à la reine video, which uses the same kind of sleeve, and I go into a lot of detail, particularly about how to sew in the gussets. We've used a machine thread to, uh, to run along the edge of the sleeves, which we are now gathering and we're just going to keep pulling that thread and gathering to crinkle up the edge of the sleeve until it's the right length to fit inside this length of cuff. That's how you measure it basically. You just need the edge of your sleeve to be the same length as the inside of this cuff piece. A quirky thing that it's vital to remember when setting a sleeve is that the sleeve itself needs to be right way around while the body of the garment is inside out and then you just pop it in like a letter into an envelope. We've set the sleeve ready to sew with all the gathers in a little arc of about 12 centimeters around the top and now we're going to sew in this circle round here. Of course setting a gathered sleeve is so much easier than any kind of fitted, smoothly fitted sleeve. So good luck to us. It's always a bit daunting. Whenever you sew up a side seam, or in fact any seam that heads down to a hem, always go from top to bottom. This is because if you try and sew from the hem up the other way, if you, well, almost always you end up with some slippage in fabric. And if the slippage happens at a point where you already have a join, then you're in trouble because the two pieces don't match up. However, if your slippage happens down the bottom, you can always correct it when you're doing the hemming just by hemming one bit a little bit more than another bit. The sewing tutorials for these kinds of shirts that I've been watching have all been finishing the collar and the neck treatment before they've gone on to set the sleeves and I think it might be better to do it the other way around and this is why I've seen several who've had problems with then finding the sleeves are too long. If you pop in the sleeves first, what it lets you do is sit the sleeve exactly where you want it, want it set the shoulder edge, and this is the crucial bit, exactly where you want it to sit, which historically for this type of shirt is a little low, a little off the shoulder. And then uh, you can measure exactly how much space you want and set your shoulder gusset, your neck gusset when you put it in, um, in the right spot so uh, everything else, everything here and back here can be gathered in and disappear. So in short what I'm saying is if you do the sleeves first you can see where the sleeve length is, where the shoulder is how much shoulder you want, and in this case we found we only want nine centimetres there, and that way we know I can mark in with this pin where I want that to end, and everything else can be worked into the gathers. So I can adjust to make the shirt fit the shoulder and neck and arm exactly the way I want it without it being apparent that I was adjusting as we go. Putting in the neck gusset is just like making a sandwich by folding over one slice of bread. You then put in a top stitch, leaving this much exposed at the top of the shoulder 
once you put the collar on. I'm going to hand stitch on the right side uh, in the hope of keeping the, the actual stitches attached to this folded piece uh, of hem rather than letting them show on the front. We started off cutting the neck gussets much too big and then quickly realised that they really should have been teeny tiny, made them a lot smaller and now the collar actually covers them completely so you don't see the exposed hand stitching at all. In order to hem the neck, rather than pinning because this is linen and it holds the crease, we are going to press it down with an iron. So it gets folded over once as finely as we can manage. It gets folded over a second time and then it gets pressed down with the iron. And after a moment of that, it will be really, really easy to hem stitch. Probably stop now. That's that's a lot of ironing for one tiny little thing. Really? Okay. This hemming stitch running down the front neck opening is his first go at the hand finishing process. I think he's being amazingly neat. Now we're getting ready to attach the collar. We have uh, divided up the collar, marking it in half, which obviously has to go middle back, uh, but then also quartered it because those two points have to be at the um, top of the shoulders. So we know which segment attaches to which. Now, the way we are doing the gather line, we are using machine gathers here. What we've done is we've run two lines about four centimeter apart along the top of the shirt and that means that when you pull them in close you get these nice helpful little bars of gathers instead of points that skew around so all we have to do now is make sure we run the machine stitch because again we're going to machine this to the collar. We'll run the machine stitch right down the middle between the two and hopefully that will make it a little easier to get a straight and secure line. You want to set your stitches to as big as they can be on your machine and then you want to run two parallel threads just like a centimeter apart. Um, then when you're doing the gathering because of course machine stitching is it's a um, it's a two thread stitching don't pull on both threads or you'll just tighten it off choose one use that to make gather do the same with the second thread running below Oop, look I can pull them like that and create even straight up and down little gathers like that. I would stitch right in the middle of the two rows then once I'd finished I would have a seam running where one of the gather threads is covered and the other is exposed and once I'd finished that off I would simply pull out the exposed gather thread. It actually takes quite a bit of thinking in 3D to do this because in the end I'm going to want this bit of the collar to um, to flop over and be and be the outside front. It's going to look like that in the end and I have to attach it to this bit of the outside front but in order to do that uh, I need all of this to be tucked away in there so that in the end that bit will be machined to that bit and then uh, it will all turn over and turn around again and we'll be where we want to be. 
so now the collar is pinned and prepped and ready for the first machined line that was exhausting to attach the collar we machine stitched the first side so took the gathered side of the bulk of the shirt took one side of the collar ran a machine stitch all the way down and then we folded the other half of the collar over those gathers. Now we're going to run a running stitch. So simple in and out, but we'll be running it right along the edge of this fold, attaching it to this point here over the covering up all the stitching of the gathers. And with a bit of luck, that will mean the line of stitching is completely invisible. Let's see how we go with that. There's no way to get around the fact that all these long inside seams do need to be hand finished by being turned under twice and held down with as small and neat a hemming stitch as you can manage. I've seen quite a few videos where people are doing this hemming stitch and going down and upwards and I find that a very unnatural movement to do. I always like to start my hand stitching at the top and work down simply because if you're doing this repetitive action with your hand, it just feels more natural to me to be going over and down, over and down, over and down. This is quite a time sink and my son did almost all of it and got really, really good at it. Bit of advice for the beginner, don't skimp on cheap thread. The last thing you want is thread that doesn't last as well as your garment. We are using silk thread here because it's a natural fibre, it's strong and it's smooth. So we're going to sew a couple of tiny little reinforcement patches are going to be here under the sleeve in this junction where these three points meet because frankly it's really messy and it could use something going over it. Because these reinforcement squares for under the arms are so tiny wee, I am doing a thing where I am turning the edges over to hem them to keep them neat and uh, but they're tiny so I've just soaked these little squares in water and because you can do this with linen because it holds its shape and then I've turned the corners under and I've actually just pinned them down on the ironing board like this and I'll just leave them there to dry like that and what I'll find is that it will have secured the folding under part for me to sew it on easily. Having sewed in this neck button and made this teeny weeny little loop of tatting to go over it we are now going to do the very last thing for this shirt, which is to sew a little reinforcement patch here at the base of the neckline. So I'm doing something slightly differently with the reinforcement patch here. I am starting with the square and I have ironed the edges in as crisply and firmly as I can because it's quite fiddly, uh, but I am just folding one corner over like that. And now we're going to put the smaller triangle at the front and we're just going to sort of sandwich it really like that because this is going to be visible on the front so we want it to be as small and neat as we can feasibly manage with hand stitching. In the end the little neck reinforcement came out looking like this. That's the front and just hand stitched as neatly and invisibly as we could manage on the back.
In summary then, this is the order that we did things. Obviously, first we measured, we decided to draw threads to mark the lines and then cut the pieces from those lines. We then machine sewed the collar and cuffs next, turned them and gave them a good pressing down as well as turning in the edges of the gussets and pressing those while we had the iron out. Now then we assembled the sleeves in their entirety and then we attached the sleeves to the body of the piece and only after we'd done that did we do up the side seams running from the top down. And only after that we then popped it on and measured the shoulders and this is exactly the right time to make a decision about where you want the shoulder to sit and how much fabric you therefore have to gather into the collar. So after that, we inserted the neck gussets and attached the collar once we'd figured out how much spare fabric we had to make the sleeves fit and sit where we wanted them to fall just off the shoulder. And that was when we then dived, dove, dove, pressed ahead into all of the hand finishing that had to be done on the inside folding over the seams and hemming the bottom. After that, we attached the button and buttonholes. And then last thing of all, we put in the little reinforcement squares. Now, how many of those you do is really going to depend on how your joins are looking and how nervous you are about the strength of the whole piece and then it was done and I believe it took in the order of around 22 hours I know that sounds mad for something that is a three-hour job for an experienced sewer but this was a process of learning all those techniques and it took us five days in total and it was a really satisfying project the running stitch solution for the inside of the collar came out looking like this. Just by running a line that only picked up the gathers and the turned under part of the collar. This is how the back looks. Now it's finished, we've given it a really good soaking rinse in cold water and hung it on a nice broad wooden coat hanger to drip dry and keep its shape. So we can then iron it when it's a tiny bit damp because ironing dry linen is just a path to tears. While we're here, I might show you what we decided to do to finish off the join of the sleeve to the body of the garment, because I've seen some quite elaborate treatments here where people have sewn panels over it and so on. We decided instead to really be very basic and just roll and tuck the raw edges and then use a hemming stitch on them. And I quite like the look of that. I think it, it shows off those uh, lovely creamy pleats. So I don't think it needs anything more elaborate than that. One of the things that makes this kind of shirt easy to make is ironically also one of the things that makes it tricky. And that is the fact that you can adjust the balance pretty much at whim between the side seam length, the gusset length, and the uh, upper part of the sleeve which holds the gathers. And what you need is to make all that fit comfortably on the length of your body from shoulder uh, while also allowing a comfortable level of arm movement. Uh, we found that this balance worked really well once we were done. So in case you have a person of a similar size, this is what we've got. We have a side seam length of 36 centimeters. Do remember, of course, this is once all the seam allowance has been taken out, everything's been sewn up now, so the original pieces would be larger than that. 36 there for the side seam, 11 for the gusset, and then 
20 for the upper part of the sleeve. How did the whole thing turn out? Well, I think pretty fabulously. Here it is. Okay, you can do a little turn now. Great. Yep. All sewn by the model in a five-day school holiday project. <laughs>